YouTube, it's Faye, and for today's video, I'm gonna do a little update on what little progress has been made on, um, on Project 88. So, here goes. So, in my last video, I showed you the disassembly of my donor turbo block and the damage that had been done to it by the previous owner spinning a rod. So clearly, we had a crankshaft that needed some work and a rod that was total garbage. So we decided that the smartest thing to do would be to get another complete, fully balanced, rotating assembly. So the crankshaft with rods and, uh, well, pistons, but in this case, we won't be able to use the pistons most likely, not only because the GE and GTE pistons are different, but also because I'm expecting that these cylinders are going to have to be bored over due to the visual damage that I've been able to observe so far. Of course, I haven't taken any measurements yet, so we shall see. <laughs> now, with a bit of research and Shop Mom verifying the part numbers, we were able to confirm that the crankshaft and rods are identical between turbo and non-turbo blocks. So I immediately got to work, removing oil pans and inspecting my fleet of 7M GEs to find the best donor for my donor. All right, so looking through my collection, I had forgotten that another also had rod knock, and another one had a score in the crankshaft from what was probably one of my students accidentally smashing it with a tool. Um, so this one that you see me disassembling here is the long block that came out of the trailer that was donated to me by Jared Pink of French Every Day. I was really hoping that this one would be good because I really didn't want to part out the complete engine that ran well when pulled. I wanted to save that as a good backup for any future projects that I may run across. I will say that I wasn't feeling super hopeful as I was pulling this one apart, so I ended up marking the location of everything on this block with the expectation that I may be reassembling everything and putting this engine back in storage. But I wouldn't know for sure until I ran it by the master. I love taking things apart so much. Um, once I had everything disassembled and labeled, I wrapped my parts up with care and brought them to Hill Country Performance and Machine. So this is where it should be if it's in the split. All right, so this is the rods. So what he means by the split is after looking up the minimum and maximum specifications of the journals, Danny calculates the exact center of the two and that is where he sets a micrometer in order to begin taking measurements. If anything, wow. it's a little bit it's a little bit taller than that. It's a little bit higher than that. It's a little bit bigger than that. So then, Whatever. so then, grinding it or polishing it, we're not going to grind it. We're just going to oh, polish yeah. it. And so well, nothing's going to come off during the no, polish. No, we're going to we're going to micro polish. All we're going to do is polish micro those light polish. Little, what yeah. the heck is that? We're going to be doing those light little. Uh, anytime it's going to scratch, a little bit comes up. That's what you're feeling. We're just going to hit yeah. those little high spots. It's just going to so they don't scratch the, the new bearings. Uh, um, any scratches in the crank? What, yeah. what, what would my uncle say? It's an oil hole. It, you know, it's, it's a line of the I whole remember oil. you seeing that. And if and you look at if you look at the old that barrels, that won't lower your oil pressure. No, if you look at your barrels, they have a big old groove. Yeah, they have a massive groove. But mm -hmm. like, I always thought that was a very specific amount that was. When you lower your oil pressure, it's when a line goes this way. Yeah. Oh, come, comes out right. Or your vertical clearance is too loose. Your vertical clearance is too loose, then you lose the oil pressure. But a line going this way affects zero, nothing ever. If okay. I have, there's, give me a pin right there. If I have this journal and I have a bearing and I have, I can have a groove in it. No oil pressure can leak. It does nothing. It just holds little oil in here. If this groove was this way, then oil pressure could leak out. Then it's not gonna but all the scratches there. here, it, it doesn't affect. It, I can take that much out in a section, and it will still have oil pressure. It wouldn't have as big of, of an area to support that. But that, we're not worried about that's We're not gonna lose all. Yes, there's no scratches that are going this way. Will never affect oil pressure. Nothing. Well, I think that's really all I have. I it's just, about, it just has lights. I was worried about that one there. 
It has real light, but micro ones because of dirt that ran in the motor. Yeah, it definitely. I have to admit, I was hesitant to leave this part in the video because I'm already expecting to get massacred in the comments by people assuming that I've never used a micrometer before, or maybe saying like, how could I call myself a master tech if I don't know how to read a micrometer? Uh, but neither of those statements are true at all. First, I own several types of micrometers and I taught myself how to read them by looking it up in a book. And um, let me tell you, it is such an easier concept to understand when you have a master explain this to you and also give you relevant real world tips and tricks. Also, none of my micrometers are as precise or as nice as the ones that Danny has. And if someone is gonna let you use their tools, you respect them and you learn how to use them. Third, I have never measured anything as precise as tenths. I mean, kind of, but not really, not exactly in this application. Fourth, I learned that I actually had been doing it wrong for quite some time. I learned that I had a pretty heavy hand and that it takes a very light touch to get the proper measurement. So several times, I had taken a measurement and then Danny checked it only to find that I had gotten a smaller number. That feels a little on the tight side. Yeah, right there. Yeah, tight. it feels a little on the tight side, which I can, you can you can manipulate it. It should always be so light. If, if it's set just right, it'll lightly maybe you'll hear a little squeak. <laughs> That's an art form. You hear the little squeak? Yeah, that little squeak. A little mouse. Um, this is 45, 46, and 7 tenths. 46, it looks like 46 and 7 tenths, um, but just feel how light it is. It's, um, cause you can squeeze it and, and, and remove 3, 4 tenths and go, oh, this cranks on the low side. Yeah. It's very, it's very finesse. Like there is, I would tell you, you should be able to not actually stay on the, on the crank, but sometimes if you do it just right, you can actually, like, yeah, that's about right. It's, you know, sometimes it'll, it'll, it will, if it hangs there on its own, you're probably one tenth a little on the tight side. Got, oh, gotcha. Yeah, so it should just kind of, you can feel a little bit. Yep. The way Monk always did it, they always they had a little squeal. Pick, 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 pick. So you knew your tension is just right. Not too tight, not too loose. <sighs> yep. Went, 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 went by the feel. Wow. Okay, so what did we, right. we had two so points. So five um, and seven tenths. All right. And I could have easily KO'd this crank if I didn't possess the machinist skills that Danny was willing to share with me. This really is all about the art of muscle memory. Danny learned this skill from his mentor, Chief, and after his entire life of mastering it, he was willing to take time out of his day, right in the middle of a work day, mind you, to give me a lesson on doing it right. I cannot even tell you the gratitude that slept over me in this moment. And also, again, just now, in writing this voiceover script so that I could make this video for y'all. I wish that I had recorded more of this day, but for now, let me share with you a couple more clips that are definitely worth watching. Hope you enjoy. Go up and down this way. Also, they wear more under here. The high side, for whatever reason, this is the high side. And this, I thought this is a kid. That's the high side. That's what's pushing the piston up, right? Well, that's what the word's gonna be. For whatever reason, phenomena, I don't have no idea, I didn't go to college, the bottom wears out. The one that pulls the crank down, that pulls the rod. I don't know, I, I don't, don't, don't get me going. I would have thought this is what makes compression. This side pushes the piston up, it fires, it gets pushed down. All the loads right here. Hmm. Why does it always wear back here? I don't know. And so, so when they'll get oval, they'll get oval this way because okay. they wear at the bottom. So if you mic here, it might mic okay. So always mic up and oh, down. Okay. Gotcha, always gotcha, mic at the gotcha. highest, right there. There you go. At a shop, they would have set it up and split and gone. Tick, 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 tick. Oh, they're all good. They wouldn't. You sit there and mic everyone with intents and write it down. Unless you're blu you're a blueprinting. Well, you know you're doing this. So why not? I wouldn't have found out that those brand new connector rods for the flathead forward were off from the factory if I if I would have just checked one and gone and or just assembled them. I wouldn't have known, and they're way off. There's two of them. They're totally off. And but but you're not going to check unless you 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 just you know check everything. All right. So what was the prognosis? Is this crank usable, or am I going to have to tear apart my good, complete running 7M GE in order to keep Project 88 moving forward? This is 2046 and five tenths, which three tenths is our low. We're, we're okay. It's, it's, it's acceptable to go back into service. And actually, it's beautiful. I can tell you, I can show you a new cranks that were cut that aren't. 
I believe you walk over and look at another flathead when you'll freak out. But anyway, yeah. yeah. Okay, so let's see. Gosh, I guess I just always had this impression that they had to be. They're, and they do. They do. This is beautiful. Six tenths. Yeah, and look where we're. The middle is seven tenths. Seven tenths. We're one tenth under the split, but we're three tenths over the low. It can be to this and still, and be, still okay be okay with, okay with the standard bearing. And if we would have gone a little bit lower, you might be able to get a one over bearing. But we're already in the split. We're 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 where the, where the factory would have ground this and send it out the door. Like I said, their tolerances are so tight that it's still within tolerance and it's been run already. So yes, uh, yes, um, um, yes. And apparently the motor blew, so this one was this one was pulled. Yes, and it blew because like we we, we know why it blew a blown head gasket or it overheated. That's, that's yes, yes. That's, it was it what, was not it, it it didn't spin a rod. And by looking at this and the gold oil on it, it wasn't an oiling issue that took the motor out. Forty six and six tenths. Yeah, and six there tenths. You go. Man, they're all within one tenth. <laughs> okay, go that one. I mean that's 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 it's beautiful. 46 and 6 tenths. Yes. 46 and 6 tenths. You got it. On this one. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. So we got this one to go. Oh, I'm going to clean that one off. It looks like it's. 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 Uh, it's uh, got some Very crap few on people it. are going to measure stuff in tenths. Okay. So we're, we're, when we're getting this, this accurate, it's awesome because these are. Every journal that we've we've measured, either you or me, are all within one tenth. And this crank has already been run. And that is how every single journal measured. Every crank journal, every rod journal. Nowhere near minimum specification and all within one tenth of one another. This crankshaft is pretty much perfect, which from the initial looks of it, I would never have expected these results. But that's why, like I said, I had to learn from the master. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you did, awesome. I'm so sorry it took a second to make this, but all of last week I was out in California filming the second annual Holiday Hoopty Challenge, and it was a freaking blast. And then I made a special appearance at the Duct Tape Drags. Uh, that was also totally awesome. Awesome meeting so many of y'all. Um, so many people that mentioned that they watched my channel, and I was like, that is that is the coolest. So thanks to those of you who came up and said hello. Um, before I sign off, I will give you some little behind the scenes footage, but little I was able to capture of the holiday hoopty challenge. I was pretty much busy the entire time, uh, even though I did bring my GoPro expecting to get some footage. Uh, this is all that I got. So <laughs> here you go. So I am in the car right now awaiting my teammate. Ah, there he is. Ah, hi Steve, how's yeah. it going? <laughs> We are on our way to Glen Helen Raceway. Yeah, I know, it's gonna uh, be great. It's gonna be great. We're, uh, we're racing, we're teammates, it's amazing. Yeah. I'm making a documentary. You are? Not really, no. <laughs> no I like the idea though. <laughs> but I figured, why not? Because normally I make like a whole bunch of YouTube videos. I try to make one a week. Yeah. And um, I obviously can't make one right now when I'm out here because I make like YouTube like tutorials. Like yeah. I, I show people how to like fix their cars and stuff yeah. and there's nothing here to fix really. Not, not yet. Not, <laughs> I know, not yet. Right? But that could change. I have no idea where we're going. Are you doing the maps? Uh, I'm not doing the maps. I haven't done the maps I can yet. get the maps. Hopefully hopefully we're not late because I'm late for everything. So here goes. So. I think your documentary would probably be better than a Blue Whale documentary. Yeah, probably. Um, as you can see, we just got done um, doing a promo no, shoot. I know. I have a lot of makeup on. So do I. Makeup. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> What'd you think about it? I've got the wrong glasses on. I've oh. got my sunglasses on. <laughs> what the? <laughs> These are going to be my race glasses. Oh, are they really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So for night, for night racing, for oh, sure. Oh, that's so smart. Yeah. Yeah, we're about to do some. Um, we're about to do some serious, serious night racing. Oh, there's a tractor. Um, so we're at. We're we finally made it to Glen Helen um, Raceway. Is that yeah. What's this called? Glen Helen Raceway. And um, now we're headed over to. Do you think I can go this way? I'll, I'll just go this way to, to turn around. I'm just gonna go this way to turn around. Whoa, that's like an off-roading course. Um, and we are going to race at night, but first we had to like, you know, do some marketing stuff. And um, we did marketing stuff. Marketing photo shoot? Yes, we did a marketing photo shoot. And um, we took pictures with with items. I got the hammer. You got you you got the sawzall. I got, I got the sledgehammer too. You got the sledge? I just got a little mini like wimpy. I know. One. I noticed that. I was wondering how come you got the sawed off front of a I hammer, and know. I got the old manly uh, uh, axe handle sledge. Probably thought I couldn't handle the axe handle. Uh, little sledge. do they know. Mm, I have no I saw idea. You to handle that hundred pound tire that when we had the car on the. Oh, uh, that was very heavy. I know. Well, I know I didn't have very far to go with it. I don't know yeah. if they're actually gonna put that in the. Oh, 
Oops. That's you. My seatbelt. Sorry, buckles. Yeah, I'm not um, your video. You are not. The chart. This is this is our yeah. This is the chart. This is the, this is the, this is the behind the scenes docu series. Yeah. <laughs> Just okay. kidding. We have um, the chime then. Yeah, we'll have the chime. We'll, we'll keep it in. Um, but yeah, no, that that tire was a very heavy. But I knew that I didn't have very far to go with it, so I just sort of rolled it across my body and onto the other pile of tires. Well, you had gravity on your side. I, if you yeah. believe in that, no. if there is a if thing, it, I don't know, it's a theory. As I don't know, well it's a I theory. Know. Yeah, they haven't proven it yet, but no. if they ever prove gravity, then I did have gravity on my side. You did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a big question mark at this it point. Is. All right, I'm gonna turn this around so you can see. Um, here we are going. What is the? We'll figure out what the stand is. I don't even know. There's a Toyota sign, and um, and here is our camper booth um, that has our bathrooms in it and our changing station. And the most important thing about it was that it was supposed to have air conditioning, um, but it's broken. Oh, it's broken. Yeah. So we don't actually have air conditioning. I have no idea where I'm supposed to park. I'm just gonna go over there near um, uh, the other vehicles, or should I go here? I don't know. Go here. Let's go here. Okay. It's convenient. It is convenient. It's it's close to the broken air conditioning. <laughs> so stay tuned for more of this incredible docu-series. <laughs> 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 All right, so continuing with the docu series, there is like obviously a lot that I'm I can't show you. You just have to wait until the holiday hoopy challenge um, and watch it. But the sun is setting behind us. This is the night race we're prepping for, and um, I just I just realized something. There is a lot of mud going on on purpose um, on the course, and I just realized that our car does not have windshield wipers um, or like any provisions for them. Like there is no linkage. We have no washer squirters. In fact, we are removing the hood. So as you can see, this is the crazy course that we've got going on. I mean, you can't see even the best part. You're just gonna have to wait to watch the hoopty challenge in order to see it. But um, basically there's like a bunch of turns, a bunch of jumps, and a bunch of mud. Um, it's gonna be insane. So we're gonna be tag teaming. We're gonna do two, I think 10 minute, sep uh, two separate 10 minute sessions. There we go. Um, and we're gonna be watching our partners um, the bleachers and we're gonna be able to talk to them and give them like pro tips and stuff But I don't know this is gonna be it'll be pretty interesting. I'm uh, a little nervous. I'm going first and uh, As many of you know, I am not like I have no like race car driving skills really like I, I don't even know why they have me out to, like these race competitions because I'm not a very good racer uh, and I'm a little nervous, but um, sorry. I'm just like trying to stay calm right now. Let's go stay calm uh, so this is uh, this is Glen Helen Raceway. It's my first time being here. We've got um, we've got all the you can't see the cars actually, but the the artistic team is currently decorating our cars in our team colors. Mine's blue, amazing. Uh, and there's gonna be like all holiday cheer and stuff. So not only do I have to worry about staying on course, um, not getting lapped, not hitting anyone, because like it's everyone's gonna be on the course at the same time. But I've also, of course, have the difficulty of the holiday cheer uh, falling in my face. So there's a whole bunch of different hazards of this course. But uh, sorry, it should, it should be pretty good. I'm, um, I'm I'm pretty excited about it. So. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this away. I'm gonna get some dinner because I got a little car sick and uh, do a little better on a full stomach. And then I'm going to get with my partner in crime and we're gonna figure out what to do about the wiper situation. And um, we're gonna come up with a game plan of how to tackle this race. So, <sighs> here goes. <laughs> hey Steve, how you feeling? <laughs> I feel marvelous. <laughs> <laughs> you think I'm going to dominate this race or what? I think you're going to do really well. Um, I have complete confidence. He has more confidence than me. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Hello, Athena. Hi, darling. Are you broody again? How long have you been broody? I know, I know. How many? Oh my god.